Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Didn't you love that song? Goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye-bye. That's declaring in faith. It is leaving. Whatever has attacked you, whatever has attacked your body or your family, we're going to claim it in Jesus' name. We're so glad to be with you today. And Pastor will explain everything that is happening in our service. But we do want to start off with prayer because prayer is powerful. Prayer brings faith into wherever you're at, in your living room, wherever, in the car. We just want to pray. We want to pray for all those that are sick with any kind of illnesses, with COVID, anything. We want God to heal your body. And in Jeremiah 30, 17, it says, but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. I'm going to believe in faith that God is going to touch my body, your body, your loved one's body. We are believing we're going to plead the blood of Jesus. We're also going to be praying for financial blessings. We'll be praying for loved ones to be saved. We need to pray for uh, a buyer for our church. We just need some miracles. And with the vision service, with speaking and authority and having the word spoken out with faith is going to take us to a new level. So wherever you're at, if you can just lift your hands and you can pray with faith, power, and authority that God is going to do what you need him to do. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that we can wake up another day and praise you. We pray, God, for a good health, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would touch everybody that is sick. We plead the blood of Jesus over their body. We curse every every uh, sickness lord in the name of jesus we pray god for you to rejuvenate every cell and to make us whole in the name of jesus i pray god that you would renew our faith to believe that you are a prayer answering god there is nothing that you cannot do i pray god that you would stir up the gift inside of us lord and help us to have faith to believe lord that you are always there for us and you said that you will heal our wounds you will restore our health in the name name of Jesus. I declare it. Say, we declare it in the name of Jesus. Repeat after me. I declare healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning. So glad to have you all tuned in live to the International Church. Amen. We are in a bit of a transition today. Unexpectedly, uh, we received a number of reports in the last day or so of a possible outbreak of the coronavirus among the members of the church, and not just, not just a um, diagnosis of the coronavirus, but we also received a lot of uh, symptoms or those that were people that had symptoms or those that were connected or around folks that had symptoms or that it turned out they had the coronavirus and for us to be wise and for us to be accountable we felt it very important with the numbers as they were growing and the reports that were coming in as we begin to communicate to other members and saints, we felt it urgent that we move quickly and that we would go back to online services for two weeks, which is a normal time of isolation or quarantine to make sure that we are getting a handle on this so that it doesn't turn out to be something we can't handle. Amen. So we started this service off with prayer. We want to thank Sister Wilson for praying. And we believe that this is going to be very temporary and we will get through this. And we want to move forward and we want to move forward in a healthy way. Amen. So praise the Lord, everyone. And we greet you all online, wherever you are. However you are tuned in, some are tuned in by Facebook, some are tuned in by YouTube, some are tuned in on the church website. Wherever you are, praise the Lord. We're so glad you're with us this morning. Amen. And we want to move right into service 
and we want to go ahead and receive our offering this Sunday. And Sunday is an important day for the saints of God to give to the work of the Lord. So let me go ahead and take some time and explain to everyone how they can give today. Amen. Do we have our chart uh, explaining how you can give online, socially, in other areas? You can follow these instructions. You can text to give. All of the information is on the screen. You can go to the church website, which is www.theinternationalchurch.org, or you can mail it in to the church, and that information is on the website as well. Or you can call the church, and we can give you further information. And the information of getting a hold of the church as well is on the website, theinternationalchurch.org. Amen. We want to pray for all the givers. I believe when people take extra time to give socially and online and all these other avenues, I believe that there's an extra blessing for that extra effort. Amen. So we want to pray. We want the Lord to bless you and we want to thank you for supporting the work of the Lord. Amen. I want to remind everyone that the altar campaign has concluded, but the altar fires are still burning. What we felt to do was we felt to take the altar campaign and make that our building fund campaign and our faith promise. So everything is going to be poured into the name, the altar. It's a powerful name in scripture, and we want to keep putting fires. The altar is going to burn at the International Church until we step in to our next level in Jesus. So we're going to put everything on that altar, the building fund. We're going to put the uh, faith promise. Everything's going on the altar, and all of that's going into our, our building fund campaign. So we want to remind everyone we did start our faith promise campaign for 2021. If you were not able to be in that service or you haven't received that information, you can contact the church. We will talk about it. We do want everyone to be a part of this great opportunity to bless the kingdom of God. So we will go into that on in more detail, but go ahead and give by faith. And I know the Lord's going to bless you. Amen. So we want to pray an extra special blessing over those that are going through the efforts of giving in this hour. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, we agree with Sister Wilson's prayer for all of the adjustments we've had to endure these last few months, even the last year. We are moving forward as the kingdom of God, and I pray, Lord, that those that are making those efforts to stay faithful to you in their giving, in their faithfulness, in their their faith in giving, I pray an extra blessing, O oh Lord, today on them. And I quote your word that it shall be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We are believing you, God, for extra increase in this hour. In Jesus name, I feel the Holy Ghost felt like the Lord wanted to touch us today. Amen. 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 Now we got just a few announcements we want to mention. First of all, we expect to resume services in the building January the 31st, okay? So January the 31st, we will resume services in the building. That's going to be Sunday. We are continuing to stream on Wednesdays. We hope that that will also change, but as of right now, we are still streaming on Wednesdays. So Sunday... January the 31st, we will resume services. We are expecting and we are planning on our 1030 a.m. service and our 630 p.m. service to both be activated. So we will provide a sign up uh, link very soon for you to sign up for the 31st. And we know that's going to be an explosive service after people at the International Church have missed service for two weeks in person. We, we have church, but it won't be in person. We know we're going to want to get into the house of the Lord and have church. So make sure as soon as the registration is live and the link is posted that you go immediately and sign up so that you can be a part of that service. Amen. We don't know how long 
we will deal with the coronavirus on this level. We are all praying that things will change, but we understand the times and we need to be flexible and we need to just adjust. Get that? We need to just adjust to whatever is happening in our world. And I believe we're going to be all right. Amen. And everything's going to work, all, work out all right. I believe that's all of our structured announcements. We do have, of course, a very special time in the month of January where all we do is focus on the vision for our church. And that's what we're going to continue to do. It's been such a blessing how the Lord has directed and used the international church in the month of January. So the vision is new levels through faith. And God is blessing us. And the scripture is now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we've been talking about faith. We've been praying about faith. And God's been ministering to us about faith. And we will also feel that today. Amen. So as we enter into the month of January, go through the month of January, we are continuing to talk about the vision. We want you to meditate on the vision. We want you to concentrate on the vision. We want you to apply the vision to your family because we're going to use that foundation the rest of the year. If the Lord tarries this entire year, we're going to walk in new levels of faith. Amen. God's going to help us, and I believe he's going to do something great for us. Amen. So we're excited about the year 2021 and the, the vision month of faith. want to remind all of those that serve in any capacity at the International Church, if you serve in leadership, if you serve in a ministry, if you help around the church, yesterday... We had an incredible seminar with Pastor Jimmy Stark, and also we, we had a surprise visitor. Prophet Wade just popped in, amen, <laughs> and he ended up preaching a sermon as well. We had a great time. You never know what will happen at the International Church. It was such a blessing. Prophetic words were given. Powerful moves of God had flowed through that seminar. And the Lord moved in a mighty way. And the purpose of that seminar was all of those that work at the International Church in any capacity. We wanted you to get a focus because we are resetting the church. We are resetting the way we do church. Everything is changing. We have to adjust to the new normal of our world. We have to adjust to where we're headed as a world, but also the spirit is adjusting us. So the international church is changing a lot of its way of ministering. So uh, if you did not make it and you need the information because you cannot serve in any capacity without being a part of the seminar and the training, because we're talking about a lot of things that are important. So if you did not make it and you need that information, you can contact the church and we will get you in touch with Sister Belkis Marshall and she will help you become informed on all the things that is happening at the church for leadership. I'm very excited about this new decade and I'm very excited about the international church and I'm very excited about this reset. We're positioning ourselves for growth in this last hour so it's going to be a great time amen i believe that's all we have for announcements and we are ready to pray and move into the word of the lord is that that's all we have brother ryan for we can go right in amen he's given me the thumbs up so that means it's time to have church everybody help me pray for the service today lord we thank you today we worship you today we magnify you this morning, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to hear the word of God. Wherever we are, wherever anyone is that's tuned in by live stream, Lord, we pray that they receive this message as if they were in the house of the Lord. That, Lord, every place where the people of God are, Lord, that it becomes a sanctuary. It becomes an altar. It becomes a powerful move of God for them. In the matchless name of Jesus. Let's be a little interactive right now. I want everybody at home to clap your hands unto the Lord. We all going to go ahead and clap our hands to the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. 
Hallelujah. I'm so excited to be serving the Lord. Amen. I'm so excited and I'm so thankful to be living for the Lord. Aren't you glad that the Lord filled you with the Holy Ghost and baptized you in his name and that you have the truth that no matter what happens in this world, no matter which direction this world goes in, you know in your heart, deep down inside, that everything is going to be all right. You have stepped out and obeyed God and I'm telling you God is faithful and everything is going to be all right no matter what direction I know our world is in chaos and people are terrified my phone is ringing off the hook with people that are put all their faith in politics put all their faith in society and it's just crumbling around them so now they don't know what to do I'll tell you what to do and it, it, by any chance if there's some church gore some apostolic somewhere that's having the same troubles i'm going to tell you how to pray through but i'm going to tell you what to do if you're going through all of that where you're panicking about this world come on in to the kingdom of god it's good in here we know who our redeemer is and the name of the lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into that and they are saved how many know his name is jesus Amen, amen, amen. If you're at home right now, just go ahead and type right on your social media. Just type something powerful. Say yes, say amen, say thank God that you're in the kingdom of God. And I feel like serving him another day. Amen, amen. Now, we want to go ahead and get started in the word of the Lord. And I am going to do my best to be brief. But we are in assignment time, okay? We are in assignment time where we are receiving what thus saith the Lord. And I, when I turn this way, all of you that are online and you may not have visited the International Church yet, that needs to change on January 31st. You need to come on and visit the church. But when I turn this way, I'm pointing to our vision. So do we have any kind of uh, motors on our camera where we could show our vision? I want to see, I want people to see when I turn this way what I'm turning to. So let's see. Okay, I'm watching the screen to see if it's moving. Okay, there's the vision. Go up a little bit, a little bit more. Can you can you a little there we go. Zoom in a little bit. I think zoom in a little bit. I think y'all can see that. It says 2021 vision. New levels through faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's Hebrews 11.1. 1. Turning to that, that is our vision. So when I turn that way, I'm referring to that banner that has just been put up on the wall for this year. Amen. So we're very excited about the Lord imparting to us, the Lord pouring into us, and the Lord solidifying what he wants us to know so you, please you are welcome to take notes and now with all with the technology we have today you can just simply watch the message over again <laughs> amen 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 so however you receive and make sure that that's inside of you you go ahead so we want to get started today and I want to read I'm just going to read one verse that's usually my custom so that I can, um, one verse will get you at least 30 minutes message from me, so I try to keep it down. So we're gonna read one verse, and we're gonna go into our vision and continue in that thought for the month of January. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter two, I'm gonna need the Lord's help, because this is, this is heavy. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, and verse number 5. Very familiar passage of Scripture, but it's still going to be weighty and heavy this morning. The Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith. Now, this year, we're talking about new levels through faith. Everybody with me? We're talking about new levels. Everybody say new levels. We're talking about new levels through faith. And the Bible tells us 
when Jesus saw their faith, he didn't just see the faith of an individual, but he saw a collective group working in faith. I don't even have time for all of it. But when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, son, you got to understand Jesus was in his 30s. And he referred to this man as son because Jesus was God wrapped in flesh. Every one of us is his sons and daughters. So even though he was just a young man in the flesh and in the world, he was still the eternal God. Uh, Y'all not with me yet. He was still the eternal God of all the ages. And he said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Your sins but he wanted to get healed in his body. But Jesus went to the depths of his issue because of this level they were in of faith. He didn't say his faith, even though there was just one guy needing a miracle. He said their faith. They achieved a level together that affected somebody that had a need. Did you hear me? They had faith over here and it affected somebody over there. You mean to tell me you can get to a level in faith where your faith can help somebody else get a miracle? This is going to be deep this morning. I want to talk to you on this subject, New Levels Through Faith, Part 3. Just real quick, ask the Lord to anoint this word. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we need an anointing so that everybody's minds is clear. Everybody can focus on what you want us to know. In the matchless name of Jesus, help me, God, to flow and to flow quickly and precisely in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, somebody say amen. We got to understand what this story means in the book of Mark. And I, I, you know how I am. I start thinking. Okay, I start thinking about this. I start thinking about that. And then my mind just goes. And, and also the Holy Ghost is talking this morning. You got to understand the picture. Sometimes we'll read a couple verses and not understand how amazing it was. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We'll, we'll read something and we'll just keep on going. And then somebody will stop us and say, did you really read that? And you'll say, my goodness, I never considered that. And I'm getting ready to take you there this morning because... These boys took the roof off of somebody's house. <laughs> Are you with me? I said, these boys took the roof off of somebody's house. Not only did they have faith, they had risky faith. Well, hello. They had risky faith. They had achieved a level of faith. I, I already feel that somebody's already with me. They had achieved a level of faith where they were okay with taking life-threatening risk because they knew it was going to work out. And not only were they taking life-threatening risks, they were taking a life-threatening risk for somebody else. It wasn't even about them. It was about somebody else. They had so much faith that they were going to step out and take a risk that was detrimental. In other words, it had to work. Say, what are you talking about, pastor? What's this all about risky faith and life-threatening faith? Let me explain something. If you are going to take the roof off, of somebody's house the last person's house I would have selected was a man like Peter 
you want to take the roof off somebody's house, somebody like Peter or anybody else that's a man, that's a fisherman, that's a, that's a man's man, that's a blue collar man who, who will let you know this is not the house you tear up. I want you to think about this for a moment. <laughs> I want you to think about this for a moment. Peter's roof is not the roof you want to mess with. They didn't even ask permission. Think about this. Peter is the man who, when it was time and stuff went down, he pulled out a knife and cut off a brother's ear. You don't want to mess with Peter. You don't want to mess with Peter. Peter was the man who said, Lord, I'm ready to die for this. You don't want to mess with Peter. Peter was tough. And these boys, now you got to understand something. They weren't rich because they had to carry him all the way to the house. In other words, you have to understand, if they had money, they probably would have brought him on a carriage. Who wants to carry somebody in the Middle East in the blazing sun? Who wants to do that? When you've got money, you probably have a carriage. You probably got a vehicle uh, in biblical times, like a carriage or some kind of wagon or some kind of contraption that would make it easier. But they just carried him. They weren't a wealthy bunch. So you, they, this wouldn't be the bunch when Peter lifts them all up over their heads and say, over his head and say, where's my money? these boys gonna say we don't have it so they took a risk to tear off Peter's roof their faith was on such a level that it got even God's attention Jesus saw the roof being tore out and then he saw them lowering down this brother they must have brought some rope and some, some suspension cables and some, a pulley system. They, would, they was working on Peter's roof. And they lowered this brother down. And the Lord looks up. He sees a bunch of heads looking down. And I, I got to admit, I, I, can, I can see the Lord smiling. Because he knew the risk. Y'all with me? He knew the risk they were taking for somebody else. And when the Lord saw that and got, they got his attention, he said, he stopped everything. The crowd, they tell me, was so crowded and so packed, it spilled out into the road and the streets, and you couldn't even get in. And the Lord stopped what he was doing when he saw risky, everybody with me, he saw risky faith. And he said, you're healed. Your sins are forgiven you. It's been taken care of. Your risk has paid off. I, you, you stepped out on faith and you, you're on such a level where everything was at stake and your money was at stake, your, your life was at stake, your, your reputation was at stake and you still stepped out and believed God and, and put the work in. He said, you, you will not leave here without your answered prayer. I'm talking to somebody about new levels in faith. Some of us don't ever take any risks. Some of us don't ever step out. Some of us just expect everything to come to us but this year God is saying it's time to go to levels where you are not afraid to step out somebody step out for Jesus step out on faith God is going to catch us when we step out on faith I got a little excited I want stronger faith this year is anybody with me Anybody, anybody, am I talking to you? Can we talk together here? Is it just me? It's not just me. There's hundreds and hundreds of people watching me this morning. Anybody believe what I'm saying? Anybody in the same boat I am? I want stronger faith. Do you want stronger faith? I want, I'm not satisfied with my level of faith. I want stronger faith in God. I want stronger faith. What I do know is that we all have different levels of faith. Everyone is on a different level. 
There may be some people that are similar, but it's still your faith and their faith. We all have our own faith. And I also found out that faith is an inward fight. So often, if we're not careful, we will try and tie our faith to someone, something, some situation. I'm here to tell you, your faith, I feel the Holy Ghost, your faith is depending on you to build it. Your faith is relying on you to nurture it and to grow it. And if we're going to go to another level in faith, we must understand that, yes, there's going to be a challenge, but the challenge is ours to build our faith. The Bible tells us that Jesus gave each one of us the measure of faith. And I want to tell you this morning, we all start out on the same level, but we don't all end on the same level. Because really, when God starts us off with faith, it's up to you if you grow it or if you kill it. It's up to you, the circumstances you put yourself in, the things you let get into your brain, the things you let sway you and indoctrinate you, it all matters when it comes to building or killing your faith. And if you don't have faith today, I first need to deal with this. Don't blame anybody else. It's up to you. I know people who have great faith. But can I tell you, every one of them built it themselves. I know people who have incredible faith, but I, wanna, I want you to understand something, ladies and gentlemen. They've got faith because they built it. God isn't walking around respecting one person or another person. He is no respecter of persons. You have to do with your measure of faith and build your measure of faith. Because everybody I know that's got faith, they earned it. Everybody I know that got faith, they fought for it. They cried for it. They endured for it. They, they weathered sicknesses and they've weathered issues and loneliness and being forsaken and trials and tribulations. And there, but there was nothing that could stop it. And all those things that came against their faith, they defeated it. Can I just go old school for a minute? And let me just say it like this. That which doesn't kill your faith makes your faith stronger. So if you just start building on it, your faith is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger, and it's going to grow. But it's going to be a fight. You're going to have to fight for new levels through faith. You're going to have to fight for new... I'm pointing at the banner. You're going to have to fight for new levels through faith. It's so important. It's so important. I don't understand why it's in my nature to resist faith. It's good for me. It's spiritual. Faith is so powerful and so important. Faith is in every aspect of our lives. Faith is a part of everything you do in the spirit. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Faith is essential. And I don't understand why it's such a challenge with something so important. Think about it. You take on the shield of faith. Faith is a part of the armor that God wants you to wear. Think about it. Faith is a fruit of the spirit. Think about it. Faith is a gift of the Spirit. Faith is a part, it's the only thing that is a part of every component of spiritual warfare and spiritual life. In other words, if there's one thing that is of the utmost importance to us, the Bible is trying to tell us it's our faith. And I don't understand 
why I have so much problems building faith. I have to fight for it. Anybody else got to fight for it? I think if the devil, y'all with me, I think if the devil's going to come against anything, first he attacks your faith. First, he somehow knows that if I can unravel their faith in God, their faith in prayer, their faith in worship, their faith in the things of God, if I can unravel that, it's just a matter of time before everything else comes apart. Because I kind of think that faith is the thing that holds everything together. It's a, it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's a gift of the Spirit. It's part of the armor of God. We need faith, and I think he fights faith. I don't know if you can do anything without faith. It's an inward fight. I want you to understand something. The devil can't mess with your faith. He can just attack it. He can't take it from you. He can attack it. He can try and deal. He can try and, he can try and get you to kill it. But your faith is more powerful than anything else, and the enemy can't stop it. Your coworkers, your neighbors, your friends, your brothers and sisters, they can't do nothing with your faith. Only you can destroy your faith. Only you can let people hurt your faith. But what I am finding out as I get older, and, and I'm going to be transparent and somebody help me, but I'm finding out that I am my own worst enemy. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me. I'm going to say that again. I'm finding out that the brother that's hating on me is me. I'm finding out that I'm the problem with my own success. Y'all not hearing me yet. Some of you, you're your own worst enemy. Quit blaming and I don't want to hear it. I told you last week, the days of victim mentality are over. We have to take responsibility and accountability for our own lives. I don't know how you were raised. I don't know what you've been through. I can compare notes with you. I've been through stuff too. I've lost things too. But I, at the end of the day, I've got to get myself together because I am my own worst enemy. In every way, I'm my own worst enemy. I mean, I mean... I mean, think about it. even goofy stuff. You know, I'm, 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 I'm being told I can only eat certain stuff because I'm getting older and I don't understand it. But, you know, I, I want to tell the doctor, it's not my fault. My taste buds have forsaken me. How come I don't like broccoli, but I love cake? My taste buds is telling me the cake is what's healthy. And you come along telling me that the broccoli, I cannot stand. Now, I, listen, if you want to be, I, I don't lie to me. I don't eat stuff that's nasty. Say, oh, this tastes wonderful. No, I'm just, this is horrible. Now, look, if I've got to eat it, I'm going to eat it. But it is horrible. I would rather be somewhere eating something that I enjoy. But if I got to eat it, I'll eat it. But the fact is, my taste buds is my enemy. I can eat some things and just go, oh, oh. and I guarantee you it ain't good for me. Because we are our own worst enemy. And think about this. Your nature, your, your body, your nature is not on your side. I hope you can hear me today. I can prove my body doesn't like me. I tell you why, because they tell me I'm supposed to exercise and, 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 and stay active. I don't want to do none of that. My body's not helping me. I start exercising, I get exhausted. I wake up saying, there ain't no way I'm exercising. Why? I don't feel like it. Do jumping jacks. I'm, I'm, uh -uh. I'm tired, I'm sweating. My body is not interested. In other words, my body is not in, thinking about my best interest. I'm proving a point. 
You can be your own worst enemy. It's in our natural makeup to go the wrong direction. Oh, you want to go deeper? Think about your heart. The Bible talks about our heart. The Bible tells us don't trust your heart. What, it, it doesn't mean that pumping organ that's keeping blood going through your body. It's talking about something deeper. It's talking about your carnal nature, your soul. The Bible is telling you something, that your very soul may not be looking out for your best interest. Can I tell you your soul will lie to you, to your face? People will tell you, I don't feel to do that. I don't feel, to do that. don't trust in what you feel. The heart is deceitful, desperately wicked. We got to understand that what we're dealing with, that we can be our own worst enemy in every way. We literally can lie to ourselves. Paul said it like this. He said, there's haters, and I'm paraphrasing. He said, there's haters inside. I'm wrestling with two natures here. He said, there's something inside of me that's not for me. I'm trying to help somebody. If you're going to go to new levels in faith, you've got to understand that it's normal to doubt. It's normal to be negative. It's normal to be critical. It's normal to not be thinking in the right way. And you have got to do everything in your power to remove all that could hurt you spiritually and make sure whether you believe it or like it or not, that you nurture that which is healthy so that you can be on the right level with God and with you. God's calling us to another level. I hope I'm not going too fast and too deep. I'm getting ready to bring us to a close. But we have got to understand we can be our own worst enemy in the process. I understand through scripture that what is inside of your faith determines your attitude. People that are critical and that doubt and that struggle with faith normally have a very low level of faith. And their carnal man is much greater than their spiritual man. There's two natures inside of us. And we've got to deal with this. If you're going to go to new levels this year, you're going to have to confront all of the carnality with inside of you. People that operate, I hope you're with, with me, you got to get this, on low levels of faith, seldom see the miraculous of God. Most of the time, it's happening, I hope I'm going slow, most of the time, the miraculous is happening all around us. But because we're so full of carnality and doubt, we don't see it or we don't believe it. Did I go too fast? The level of faith you're on determines how much of God you will experience. Fight for new levels in faith this year so that God can do more for you. Now, let me prove it. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 5, and verse number 38, Bible tells us, and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and he seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. Now, the Lord walks into an environment. They were asking him to come. They needed a miracle. Um, the damsel had died and they were all weeping. It was chaos. They were wailing greatly, but they called the miracle worker. Now, they're weeping, they're wailing greatly, and they called the miracle worker. The miracle is surrounded by faith. Miracles are always surrounded by faith. 
So the miracle worker walks into an atmosphere of little faith and doubt, which usually produces weeping and wailing and a tumultuous environment. And when he walks in, verse 39, and when he was come in, he saith unto them, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead. Faith starts talking. Faith sees things that haven't even happened yet because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith walks in seeing stuff that's not yet seen. Jesus walks in, I feel the Holy Ghost, surrounded by, somebody gonna get a miracle this year. He walks in surrounded by faith. He said, she's not dead. Faith will see stuff that you can't see with doubt. She sleeps. Verse 40, and they laughed. I want you to get this. Be careful what you laugh at. Don't get a Sarah spirit. You know in the Old Testament when God visited Abraham and said Sarah's going to have a kid, Sarah laughed and said, I'm too old. And God, who is faith, walked in there and said, what are you laughing about? They laughed him to scorn. Do you know what that means? They didn't just laugh, they laughed sarcastically. <laughs> you believe this guy? Doubt always says that about faith. You believe this guy? He comes in here, we're with a dead person, and he's talking about life. Doubt does not produce anything but death. Laughed faith to scorn. Be careful what you laugh at. You might be killing the faith within you. Now, they're laughing. Then the Bible, I like this. But when he had put them all out, I like that. You know, the Lord didn't play. He didn't play. When did you come down the stairs? The Lord didn't play. The Lord put them out just once. I'd like to walk around and put doubt out. <laughs> All of y'all, get out of here. Go on. You got to go. It reminds me of what happened when we were in India on a tour uh, doing a missionary work, and we went to the back hills of uh, India, just, all, just close to the borders of Pakistan to a village that was, we were going to minister at. And before we went to the, the conference, they took us to uh, the house of one of the most prominent men in that area. They were calling for us to come. And CP said, well, I'm going to bring Pastor Wilson and his team, and we're going to pray. And we go into the room, and he's alive by all these machines. And they said, well, we're good. we got to pull the plug now. It's been too long, but we just hope that you would pray. And this scripture became alive to me because I was looking at a dead man that a machine was pumping air in and out and they were about to unplug it. And I was looking at a dead person who was being kept alive by machines. And, and, and I remember as we looked, the Lord spoke to me and this came to me. The Lord said, put them all out. And I turned to, to, the, to the head of the house. I said, I need everybody to leave except my team. And they all left, and we prayed a simple prayer, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, you tell that team, he'll sit up. And we left and went to the conference, got the word back in a few days, because we had kept moving, that the good public official sat up, and he was healed and he is still alive and doing well today. And our good pastor, Pastor Richie, went over there and they sent pictures of him back with Pastor Richie. So excited. They want us to come back. The whole village converted to the apostolic. The whole village converted because of that miracle. Can I tell you, I know what he's talking about. You got to put, I feel the Holy Ghost, you got to put doubt out. Somebody say, put doubt out. Jesus put them out. The Bible tells us when he had put them all out, I'm in verse number 40, and he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, to lieth akuma, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, 
Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years, and, she were, and they were astonished with great astonishment. When people are full of doubt, they usually end up with great astonishment because they never believed it was possible. But the Lord wants us to start believing that all things are possible to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And we've got to go to new levels in faith so that we can see this impossibilities becoming possible. Amen. And I want to bring us to a close with this powerful word that God gave me. When you look in Joshua 6 and 10 in the New Living Translation, and you're fighting for your faith, we come to the story in the walls of Jericho. The walls of Jericho were so large and so wide and so big that chariots would ride on them. Do you understand what I'm saying? These were massive. These weren't fences. These weren't gates. These were walls that kept out the world and chariots could ride on them. And when we come to this passage of scripture, we understand some ingredients to go to the next level in faith. Joshua 6.10 tells us they're getting ready to have this victory. He says, do not shout. Do not even talk. Joshua commanded. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout. Then shout this doesn't make any sense when you think about it until you get to the serious core of it he told him don't shout don't say anything I don't want any of you to talk you know why because they would have talked themselves out of a miracle because this people is known this people is known to be critical and full of doubt and Joshua did one better. He said, I saw y'all didn't get to go into the promised land because 40 years we wandered around the wilderness because y'all, listen, don't say nothing this time. <laughs> y'all didn't hear me. Don't say nothing because you are your worst enemy. I don't want you to say anything until I say shout. We have to understand the danger of what comes out of our mouth. The critic, the skeptic, the spirits of doubt, the st it kills what could have been in you. Don't ever let it happen. It's better not to say anything than to say something full of doubt. And as we already talked about, the power of words mixed in faith. We understand historically that when they shouted, the walls, the Bible said, didn't just fall over. They fell down flat. They tell us historically, you can't find those walls laying around in massive clumps of rubble. The Bible tells us it fell down flat. In other words, it went straight down. Woo! Faith took care of it because there are power in our words. Warfare is fought by our words. Faith relies on our words. And we have to understand that God wants us to go to new levels. New levels. It will be through faith. Risky faith. Those boys, they just, it just seemed like they knew it was going to be all right. They just, there's something about people with that level of faith. They're doing things that others are terrified to do, but there's something about them. They just know it's going to be all right. Like Jesus walked around talking about things that were a disaster, like it was all right. He was on such a level that he would say, this person's not dead. The boys tore off the roof taking a huge risk. My, my, my. Could you imagine if the miracle didn't happen? They got to deal with Peter and everybody else. But when a miracle happens, 
it kind of equalizes everything else. You, he got a miracle. That's great. We, we'll figure this out later. You see that miracle. God wants us to be on another level of faith. Our world needs a church and a people on another level of faith. Right where you're at, we're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to ask the Lord to help us. And we're getting ready to challenge our own self and realize that we are our own worst enemy. And we need to pray. And we need to work on this. I want you to be thinking about this this year. I have to build and nurture my own faith. I have to take responsibility for the level I'm on with faith. You remember last Wednesday about the levels of credit score of faith. Now we're going deeper. We have to take responsibility for our current level of faith. God's saying, go build it. Talk to people. Call somebody that has faith and let them pour something into you. I used to have people call me all the time saying, just talk to me about some things that God has done so that it can help my faith. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to make up stories and lie to you. I'm going to tell you that this is what God did. So you can believe and have, be no longer faithless, but now be believing. Let's talk to the Lord. Lord, we love you today. Lord, we pray in faith today. Somebody pray for your faith. Say, Lord, I want, I hope you can hear me. Say, Lord, I want a greater level of faith, the kind of faith that moves mountains, the kind of faith, the kind of faith, the kind of faith that sees the great things of the Lord, the kind of faith, the kind of faith that can make a difference in my life and the life of others. We learn something, Lord, today that our faith also on, on the right level can even affect Others. Somebody pray for your faith right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pray for your faith right now. Ask the Lord to help you right now. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you. Oh Lord, I want to do great things for you. And it all requires faith. If I'm going to have fruits in the spirit, it requires faith. If I'm going to be used mightily in the gifts of the spirit, I, there's faith there. If I'm going to fight against the devil, I need the shield of faith. I got to have more faith. Got to have new levels of faith. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead and pray for somebody next to you in your house, in your wherever you're at, place of business, your job, wherever you're at, pray for the person if they're having church with you and it's appropriate. I know we got restrictions. If it's appropriate, family member, child, pray for them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help their faith. Help their faith, help their faith, help our faith. If you know somebody in your life that's living for God, but they're greatly struggling, and you know they're struggling with faith, and it's stopping them from growing, pray for them right now. Go ahead and pray for them right now, because I know that there are levels, and somebody in the room may say, I'm really struggling. I need prayer. Go ahead and confess that so people can pray for you right now. We're having an altar call. It's a different kind of altar call, but it's still altar call. God's still moving. I pray for everybody, Lord, that's all over the airways. Everybody, Lord, that's in every room that's tuned into this program, tuned into this service. I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for them. I pray, Lord, that you would increase and touch us, that we can have faith on another level. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray, oh Lord, for everybody that's tuned in. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and reach out. 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 Reach out to the Lord. Reach out to the Lord. 
Let's have a move of God. Let's not waste this Sunday. Let's have a move of God today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's have a move of God today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's have a move of God today. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. Let's have a move of God today in our homes, in our places where we are. And let's have a move of God. Thank you, Jesus. Faith that moves mountains. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God bless you today. I think we're going to have some music playing so you can continue to pray. And we believe in God for a great week and we're going to make it through these two weeks in Jesus. We're going to have to learn that we can serve God in any situation. So go right ahead and keep praying. Go ahead and make sure you've got a touch from God today. Don't waste this day because we have different circumstances, situations. In Jesus' name, looking forward to streaming this Wednesday. We're expecting a great move of God. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the International Church this morning.